At the start of Petscop 17, we see the player enter a secret code and unlock a back-end developer tool of sorts through the sound test menu. They select the house and set the generation level to 10, then hit play. In the house, we see a bunch of different pyramid heads running around in what appears to be Kerr's birthday party from Petscop 14. There are many things this could be, but today I'm going to tell you why MatPat is probably wrong. Now, as per my last video, I've theorized that these pyramid heads are all separate recordings happening within the house, with the pyramid head denoting a recording that is happening but isn't selected and the guardian head is a recording selected to be the player. When a pyramid head is selected, the recording is made a guardian and all other recordings disappear. But why do they disappear? We see a pyramid head alongside a guardian head in Petscop 12, so why do they disappear here? It must be an unexplained product of the impulse test but it might be something else. We know that from Petscop 12, that the pyramid head is Paul from Petscop 10, and is a recording that was happening at the same time as Bell, who was given the guardian head for that demo. So if the common factor is the time of the recording, then there is the possibility that these recordings in Petscop 17 disappear because they were not recorded at the same time, and thus when a recording is selected, all the other pyramid head disappears, as they were not present for the demo's recording. But why would this prove MatPat wrong? First, let's explain the dial and what it is superficially. The dial is a selection mechanism inside Petscop's hidden backend developer mode. It seems to cycle through the recordings in a given area, with the current selectable recording being indicated by highlighting of the corresponding pyramid head. The dial too lights up when a recording's position on the wheel is reached. Finally, the dial has what seems to be a circular red gradient that indicates something, probably to do with the recordings that we see. So, that's the dial. Now, what could it mean? Well, let's see. What's not so simple to see on this dial? Well, how many clicks does it take to spin around the entire wheel? At the start of the video, using the counter to track and place the number for each tick of the dial, we see that there is exactly 60 ticks on the dial in total. At 29 individual points on this dial, a recording can be selected. There's a notepad document in the description labeling each one. Now, what else can we see? Well, the gradient that's on the dial, is that a smooth gradient or are there increments to it? Let's up the contrast. Due to the nature of Petscop videos being covered in a layer of interlacing and the need to enlarge the dial, each section of the gradient isn't easy to see, but there are discernible sections. There seems to be 12 different sections. Hmm, what else? Each recording fades as soon as it gets 7 ticks away from the dial's current position, allowing for a possible of 13 different recordings to be on screen at the same time. But that's in the house. Outside the house, the recording can be seen from about 10 to 12 clicks away from the dial's current position. The dial also lights up even when the selected recording hasn't left the house yet. 
With this information, we can begin to rule out what the dial isn't. These recordings probably aren't intelligent AI trying to get through the door. If the dial was used to gauge which of these recordings could get through the door, then why not just choose the most recent and advanced one, being that the goal is to get through the door, as MatPat states, and make it outside. If this recording at 45 can get through the door, then why can't this one at 58 get through it? A more advanced generation wouldn't throw away its ability to achieve its end goal. Also, how is the user determining which AI can make it through the door anyway? 45 was the one that exits the house, and it was standing still the entire time. The only other recording we see exit the house is 35, and it was doing this. So what could it be? Well, as some of you might have already figured out, this dial has 60 different ticks and 12 different shades of gradient, which makes it very similar to a clock with 60 seconds, 12 hours, and these three hands. Another point of correlation for the dial being a clock is the recording that's selected to be Carrie Marks, assumed to be Care, is in fact situated at point 45 on this dial. Now, I made the mistake when counting each tick, as I attributed the lighter part of the gradient to be the lower end of the dial, and thus started counting from one there. But if this dial is a type of clock, then I should have started counting clockwise. And where is point 45 on a clock? At 15 minutes. If this were a clock, and if this line under the arrow counts for anything, then it's possible the time that this recording was chosen, on a clock, would be 6.15. The exact time Care A was kidnapped in Petscop 11. So this recording, chosen to be Carrie Marks, aka Care, was situated on the dial at 6.15 and was then told to retrace its steps outside the house to find out what happened to them. Seems pretty coincidental, but the idea that the dial is in some way manipulating or scrolling through time is given more validity if my theory about their pyramid heads holds true. If this dial does denote the time of the recordings, then it would make sense that the other recordings disappear as they weren't happening at the same time as the selected recording. Now, let's address this room impulse menu selection. I'll be very basic in my description. A lot of people get this room impulse tag twisted with room impulse response. An impulse response is the reaction of any dynamic system in response to some external change. Room impulse response, normally, is a type of impulse response that is commonly used to test echo in a room. It is measured by creating a sound in a room with a microphone and then, by studying the decay of the sound over a period of time, starting from the initial creation of that sound, you get the room's impulse response to the noise that was created. So think of it as adding A to B, and then seeing how B reacts, and that's the impulse response. However, this room impulse response isn't measuring sound. If it were using some form of radar or sound-based sensing, pseudo or otherwise, we can imagine that the later recordings, either being in the very red or very white of the dial, would be very close or very far from the source of the sensor, respectively, i.e. this cake and balloon. But they aren't, they're scattered randomly through the house, so it's not measuring distance, which is what the sound would be used for. The only thing that would make sense in terms of an impulse being made and the room reacting to it, would be this dial adjusting something that was unique to these recordings, such as the time they were created. We know that the dial's imitating some kind of impulse response, as we see these recordings decay as the dial moves further away from them with only hints of them being picked up by the system after five clicks on the dial away. But in the end, what do I mean by measuring the time of the recordings? Honestly, I'm not sure myself. I say it's the time that they were recorded, but what does that mean in terms of care being at 6.15? The truth is, I don't really know. It is some sort of time, significant moments, dates, etc. that this dial is adjusting to select these recordings, but I'm just not sure what. Now, here are some theories that might explain some other things. The term generation, to me at least, is the build of the current level in Petscop. So when generation 10 is selected for the house, the build of that house is set for the 10th generation, which happens to be Care's birthday. But why did the person controlling the game make it generation 10? Well, in game, we know that Care's birthday happens the day after she went missing from both the school and the house, which happened on the 11th of November. So, they choose the build in which a recording of care has run away from the area they're trying to find, to the house. Now all that needs to be done is to retrace her steps. But why did they need the recording outside of the house? Why not just start inside? Why not cast a spell there? 
it's Generation 10 inside the house. But outside the house seems to be a very different story, though it's not immediately apparent. Why can we only select the recordings 45 and 35 outside of the house? Between 45 and 35, there are the recordings 37 and 38 in the house. 38 stands here the whole time, and 37 runs to this corner again and again. So why couldn't they leave? Or why couldn't they be selected? The answer may lie with the recordings 57, 31, 20, and 15. We see them running at the door here, But even though the door is clearly open, these recordings can't exit. This may indicate that the recordings, though they exist in Generation 10 of the house, might not have been recorded in that generation. And as such, there might be a generation where the house door is closed, the generation in which they were recorded. But if the recordings play out inputs verbatim, why can't they leave? There may be another reason. What does a game do when it loads a level? It places and renders objects in the world. What do these recordings do? They repeat inputs. So why would a game place and or render objects for a recording that isn't being watched and no one cares about? Simple, it wouldn't. The game may save on memory, canonically at least, by disallowing non-controlled recordings from leaving stages via the loading zones, thus preventing it from having to track them and load other environments, and allows the player to have a corralled section of recordings to choose from. So the reason we don't see 37 and 38 outside is because either the door is closed and they couldn't get past it, or they just never made it outside. But that doesn't explain what all these recordings around 35 are doing, because they seem pretty close proximity-wise in terms of the dial to 35. If they're not 37 and 38, what are they? It's another thing that I just can't explain. But then, what is this guy who's controlling the game looking for if it's not a recording that can exit the house? Well, it seems as if the person controlling the dial also has control over the recordings once selected. Take 31 for example. Running at the door, can't get out, then BOOM! Made a guardian. But then what does it do? It runs around, back and forth for a bit, then deselected and immediately begins running back at the door again. Same goes to 45. Stands completely still, but then when it's selected, runs out the door. The movement seemed far too human when it's selected. Like the controller was searching for something, or showing something off with the other recordings, and then finally settled on 45. That's the last question that remains unanswered. Though the dial separates each recording via some sort of time mechanic, what was the player who was in control of the game looking for? And if number 45, 6.15 on the clock, does represent care, what makes these other recordings so significant?